Zack Snyder's Justice League thanks to Ethan Van Skyver, a known sexist in the credits. Lovely. Okay, hey everyone, welcome to Comic Artist Pro Secrets. You are listening to me, um, Ethan Van Skyver, 28-year veteran in the comic book industry. Uh, I used to work at DC Comics. I worked there for 20 years, drawing books like Green Lantern and Flash, Little Batman, Little Superman, Little Wonder Woman. I've done it all. I mean, I was uh, one of the biggest artists at DC Comics for about a five-year period in between 2004, 2009. Uh, I was having hit after hit after hit and left my mark and imprint on so many of DC's properties in ways that still resonate today. Uh, that's reality. Sometime around 2016, 2017, after the election of uh, the former president, still president in my heart, uh, I got canceled. I was proud. I was proud of voting for the president, and that didn't sit well uh, with many of my peers, and they began to spread rumors about me that I uh, believed in white supremacy and the things that they do to destroy people's lives, in other words. None of it was true, um, but it was important that an outspoken Republican be removed you know, from a popular and influential spot within this big corporation, DC Comics. So SJW spread rumors about me and did what they did to, did to me what they did to Gina Carano. You all saw that happen in real time uh, and got me um, basically unpersoned to DC Comics. But it doesn't matter. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, my influence still lingers on. I, you know, it still resonates. Uh, I am an incredible creative person who did come up with fantastic visual ideas, uh, and that can never be changed. That can never be taken away. Uh, the Zack Snyder cut of the horrible Justice League movie, and it was horrible, okay? I'm prepared to fully blame Joss Whedon for 90% of what was horrible uh, about the movie. Uh, I still cannot explain the Fruit Loop who is playing the Flash. I don't understand uh, why he is so goofy and he is not does not resemble Barry Allen or Wally West or any Flash that's ever been in the comics. That doesn't make any sense to me, and that's never going to be okay. Uh, but on the other hand, I'm prepared uh, this Thursday to give Zack Snyder's Justice League a brand new uh, chance and a fresh set of eyes, and let's hope that uh, it's much, much, much better than Joss Whedon's movie. I don't know how it could possibly be worse. So I'm looking forward to it. Now, in the Joss Whedon movie, I was credited. Um, and the reasons why are because uh, I think there was a little bit of Green Lantern stuff in there. I think there's going to be more in the Zack Snyder cut. Uh, and also, um, I, uh, with Jeff Johns in 2001-ish, 2002, I can't remember the exact year, did a book called Flash Iron Heights. It was a 48-page one-shot Flash horror story that introduced this terrifyingly uh, poorly run, sadistically run prison in Keystone City called Iron Heights Prison. Uh, and famously, you know, um, they had an image, they had a sparkling image above ground, but they also had something called the pipeline where they stowed the worst criminals and just let them rot. Uh, there was, you know, uh, it was just a, a really terrifying place. And then a, this virus gets loose and uh, go read the book. I, mean, I think you'll actually enjoy it. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, in the movie, uh, uh, Barry Allen's father is accused of killing his mother and is sent to Iron Heights Prison. We also, me and Jeff Johns, created this idea uh, that Barry's father was accused of killing his mother in another book that we did called Flash Rebirth. And I think I either created Barry's father, Henry Allen, or his mother, Nora Allen. I'm not really sure. <laughs> but both of them were in the book, and I think one of them is new. I still receive royalties whenever they're mentioned. And so I got a great, big, enormous royalty check uh, for the Joss Whedon Justice League movie. I honestly, I thought the movie lost money, and why would I get any money? If it lost millions of dollars, why would I be receiving a six-figure royalty check? And nevertheless, uh, I did, and it looks like the same thing's going to happen again um, because the same elements are going to be repeated in, uh, presumably, uh, are going to be repeated in the Zack Snyder cut. I haven't seen it yet. I don't really know why I'm receiving this uh, special thanks, but uh, you're welcome. Uh, I would just say you're welcome, you know, for the decades uh, of hard work that I, you know, put in at the drawing board, my head down, dreaming of ideas, 
about characters that didn't belong to me, that belonged to enormous corporations. Complete waste of my time. But every now and then, a movie comes out and you get a, a special thanks because your ideas were used. And then, you know, you can say hallelujah if you want to. Uh, or you can be a social justice warrior and be very upset about it. Now, social justice warriors create nothing but pain and havoc. Uh, they did turn my life upside down because of my vote and the fact that I am who I am. I'm a, uh, some would say I'm a conservative Republican. I think conservative Republicans would actually say he's a liberal. Um, but uh, in any case, whatever I am, it's far, far to the right compared to uh, the communist lunatics that populate the comic book industry uh, and the people who are making opinions uh, and making uh, fan culture hostile. Uh, right now to this day and they are I mean there are SJWs social justice warriors uh, people who are professional political troublemakers uh, who are making all fan communities miserable okay uh, that's what this person's doing here Zack Snyder's Justice League thanks Ethan Van Skyver a known sexist how do you know I'm a sexist I mean try uh, make jokes now and then but uh, in truth you, you know I'm a sexist uh, in the credits lovely well there's absolutely nothing you can do about it uh, as much as uh, you may dislike me um, personally, you might not like what I believe in, you might exaggerate it and slander me um, for this and that, uh, I still did help create this movie. In fact, the movie would not be the same uh, were it not for me, my life, my brain, my ideas, uh, and my beautiful drawings. Uh, now, this is uh, <laughs> this tweet prompted 36 retweets, many of which I cannot read because these lunatics block me uh, at every turn. And in fact, uh, this person here, as soon as I uh, as soon as I saw this tweet, you know, I, I did retweet it with, uh, you know, if you're going to call me a sexist, I might as well play into it. FBs get money, uh, which is, uh, and then this. This is the symbol of uh, laughing in patriarchy. Like, this is the face, you know, Don Draper in Mad Men, this is the face of the patriarchy, and that image never fails to make me laugh, and it really does upset feminists. Uh, yeah, FBs get money. I'm going to be getting a big fat paycheck for this, and there's nothing they can do about it. Uh, this person here, and, and again, they go on, regardless of whether or not he was forced to do it, EVS will never STF you about this. I never will. Can't stop, won't stop. I'll be talking about this nonstop. Let me tell you something. Uh, me being credited in this kind of a way might seem like a big idea to do nothings who have uh, who have accomplished absolutely nothing in their lives. But to me, this is just another day on the uh, calendar. Uh, I constantly create amazing things. Uh, I am always being told uh, that my ideas mean something to people. I I've been entertaining uh, my customers and my fans for decades, like I've said. Not at DC Comics anymore. Now I'm doing it on my own comic book, Cyberfrog. So it's much more meaningful when people say to me, uh, I read Cyberfrog. My kids love Cyberfrog. I can't wait for the next Cyberfrog. Uh, but uh, actually, the only reason why I wouldn't STF you about this, I'd already forgotten about it, is because it upsets SJWs so much. Now I have to act like this. Like, I wouldn't act like this if it weren't for this. If they didn't act like this, I wouldn't act like this. This is called drinking SJW tears. That's all it is. Uh, so now we've got some very pious, uh, what is this here? Oh, dear God almighty, Alden Diaz, uh, host of Octo Radio, Star Wars podcast. Uh, he, him, if you say so. Uh, all right, so this person is going to give a lecture about how uh, I don't deserve this. Uh, this is uh, somebody who is uh, cancel culture extraordinaire, and you're going to see that in this uh, in this series of uh, really awful, ugly tweets from an awful, ugly, weird soy boy who is uh, uh, definitely probably ill. Uh, definitely probably. <laughs> definitely probably. Allegedly, perhaps. Uh, there are excellent people on this list. Um, yeah, there are. There are a few. There are also some, you know, terrible people. And then one great person right here. Uh, but it's still shameful to see this particular inclusion. Sure, some of this comes down to crediting within an adaptation. Sure, some of it does. No, all of it does. That's all it is. They just borrowed ideas that originated here, right here. Uh, but EVS is a known misogynist and alt-right bigot. See, it's these this used to mean something, and that's what's so terrible about these people. You used to actually uh, be able to identify people who were legitimate bigots 
uh, and you that would mean something it was something that was shameful uh, you would i mean that kind of community pressure uh, should come down on, on people who um, mistreat others based on their skin color uh, and based on you know who they are their immutable characteristics it doesn't mean anything anymore uh, the weirdos like this creeps like this just misappropriate you know and den like just utterly denounce people in the strongest terms and it's their way of saying i can't cope uh, with ideas that are unfamiliar to me or that i disagree with so i must cry scream and denounce them in the loudest possible terms and uh, anima harasser apparently as though this weren't harassment that should nullify your credit no it doesn't it doesn't nullify my credit none of these even if any of these were true and none of them are uh, except maybe the misogynist part a little bit fbs get money uh <clears throat> in any case uh, it shouldn't nullify my credit i still created the stuff that's being used for this movie this isn't a present to me uh this isn't a gift to me i, I don't need this uh this isn't something uh that uh, i worked hard for uh, that i earned or anything this is just a fact you know it this is uh they have to credit this because they use my ideas the other choice is to not use my ideas uh, but they chose to be smart and actually use my ideas and they go this individual goes on hit this man with the axe rebel shock trooper treatment and call it a day in other words cancel me uh like gina carano you know um we hate gina carano cancel well you already did you know and uh, things are okay I, I i survived somehow the fact that weirdos don't like me hasn't really hurt me in fact in fact it's helped me it's helped me a little bit you know because i've been able to contrast myself my own work my own behavior the things that i say and believe my sense of humor with people like you uh, and because you're so terrible because you are so terrible and everybody can see how awful you are everybody can see the misery that you're creating the failure that people like you are creating uh, and they see the success and happiness and fun that i'm creating and i seem to be doing better than i've ever done uh, because of it he doesn't deserve to be associated with the properties and heroes he's worked on again um it you know i agree uh, i deserve better than that which is why i'm doing cyber frog uh, but i will forever be because i actually did things that mattered while i was working there i didn't just go in there and cash a paycheck i didn't go in there and waste everybody's time i i actually did great work i did great work and that's why it is being um used for this movie uh here's somebody who blocked me uh we can only speculate what they would say probably ethan's had a visual take on every character in the film i think maybe not some of the apocalypse characters no i drew them all i've i've done almost everything at dc i've drawn almost every single character and i had unique ideas for every single one i always looked at todd mcfarlane as um an inspiration in this way in many ways i love todd mcfarlane i just i still think that uh, he's somebody to emulate in in many ways uh, his ability to um, shrug off this kind of stupid jealous criticism and still go forward uh, plow over their faces with a tank and just succeed I mean just succeed and do better you know look beyond the narrow confines of what the comic book industry uh, has to offer and seek something better for yourself and that's that's something that I do that's something that I promote that's something that I believe in um, but uh, while I was working at DC Comics, like Todd McFarlane, I tried to make every single character uniquely my own. So, you know, I would take Batman and I would say, let's go back. Let's, let's figure out who Batman actually is, what the original ideas uh, behind Batman were. And let's kind of redo Batman so that he's more like, more like what was uh, what Bill Finger and, to a lesser extent, Bob Kane originally envisioned like what were those ideas and and because i was able to do that for every character that i worked on from flash to green lantern and yet to batman uh my ideas resonate they still will uh, so that's probably it gail's there like you said morrison lee so it makes sense i just think the guy should be wiped from any sort of thanks uh i have bad news for you uh it's gonna get worse for you it's gonna get much worse uh like, he was also a major Green Lantern artist, if not the biggest, definitely the biggest. Uh, probably, when it comes to my contributions for Green Lantern, I always used to say that Green Lantern 
uh, had one artist per decade, one major artist per decade that, uh, you know, meant something, uh, that, that defined the character every 10 years. I think Batman, you can say the same thing, maybe Superman, but Green Lantern, definitely. The 60s was Gil Kane, the 70s was Neil Adams, uh, the 80s was Joe Staten, uh, the 1990s um, would have been, oh man, shoot, the guy who does not, oh, he's a friend of mine too, I'm so sorry, Daryl Banks, Daryl Banks was the 1990s, and the uh, aughts from 2000 to 2010 was me, um, I'm, I'm the one who redefined, reshaped, uh, and re-envisioned Green Lantern for that decade, for that entire decade, uh, and, and that's just, that's reality, so, um, I don't think they should even acknowledge him when that show gets moving on HBO Max, but they will, and that's going to hurt you too, which makes me laugh. Uh, I think it's gotten better recently with them receiving the credit they've deserved. Thank you. But historically, that's all been pretty loose. They've all been walked all over, and it all seems a very handshake agreement. But yeah, maybe it's changed for better and worse. Um, yeah, maybe it, maybe it has changed. Maybe they don't listen to you, and they're just actually being factual and just saying we took from uh these ideas and these creative people and it doesn't matter if uh, androgynous weirdos i mean real creepy uh dickheads uh, on twitter don't like it you know we, we can't really follow peer pressure because historically peer pressure isn't going to matter this isn't going to mean anything what matters is uh the work itself uh and yeah and they're still trying to they're still trying to wrap their brains around it it's like royalties that's why they legally have to credit him. Okay. They do, and I'm still a scumbag. Vance Skyver is still a scumbag. Hell yes. Okay, that, that's probably true. The other choice uh, for them would be to not use any of my ideas ever. But as they go forward and as they use, as they make a Green Lantern TV show, uh, and as they proceed to um, make more and more stuff, more and more content for HBO Max, I ask you, where are they going to turn? Are they going to turn to the SJW comics of today, of the last decade? Where are the classic stories from people like this? Where are the classic stories from these people? What else can they do except go back one decade to when I and my peers ruled the roost over at DC Comics and plunder those ideas and those stories as the most modern, significant ideas and concepts um, and visions that DC Comics has to offer. Unfortunately, uh, Soy uh, and this crap, these people and, and the people they admire, don't create anything of value. Uh, they never put their hearts into it. They, were, they consider uh, comics, writing comics, drawing comics to be something uh, that is embarrassing. It's, it's a temporary embarrassment until they move on to their Netflix TV show, uh, which will also fail. Uh, and so uh, there's nothing there's nothing for DC to use. Uh, I will say this. I think they're going to continue to use my ideas. I think uh, Green Lantern, uh, they're going to continue to use Jessica Cruz, a Latina Green Lantern that I co-created. I get credit uh, for creating her. Uh, and I think they're going to uh, continue to put my name in the credits. And I would say these people can continue to cry. Uh, and, of course, I will never STFU uh, about it. It is funny. I mean, it... Hey, look, uh, for those of you who are excited about the Zack Snyder Justice League movie, I'm excited for you. I am uh, very excited about seeing it myself. I will watch it as soon as it's available. I know Zack Snyder's fans are super, super passionate. I've interacted with some of you online, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, you are protective of this project. You're waiting for it to happen. You're expecting the best of it, and my fingers are crossed for you. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I, think, uh, I think it's going to be pretty neat and portend. Um, interesting things for the future. Uh, you know, the idea that, like, you know, these uh, this movie failed, and yet there's this conflict behind it, and we now have this new platform where people have a choice. They can actually, the people's voice, the customer, uh, can actually affect change like this. It's Comicsgate. It's all about uh, what we believe in with Comicsgate. This is really, really exciting. So whether or not the movie is actually good doesn't matter. The fact that it exists... The fact that we're going to get to see it is absolutely everything. So I join you in your triumph and uh, <laughs> just F these people. It's so funny. All right, I'll talk to you later. Hey, do me a favor. Like, subscribe, share this video. 
let me um, let me hear what you have to say about it in the comments. I do read all of your comments, and uh, I'll be back with another video later. Bye. New from all caps comics, Snowman, a cold day in hell. The victim of a genocidal massacre has somehow returned from the dead and is carving a path of death across the heart of America. Driven by the echoes of silent screams, this is the story of a man once known as Black Dog, the one now forever known as the Snowman. Snowman, a cold day in hell, back it today, only on Indiegogo. Hey, I got a P.O. Box. Want to send me some mail? Send it to Ethan Van Skyver, P.O. Box 607, Marlton, New Jersey, 08053. And I'll probably open it up on the live stream. Thanks very much, everyone. Hey, you want to follow me on Twitter? Are you sure? Well, if so, I'm at Ethan Van Skyver. That's at Ethan Van Skyver. See you there.